Assalamu alaikum lovely students. Today we are going to talk about bacterial culture in detail. But prior to starting the video, I like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. Let's jump right into the video. Culture. A process for identifying and describing the species of bacteria in laboratory grown samples. There are some terms that I would like to mention prior to telling you about the method of how to do culture. Number one is medium. Its plural is media. It is any preparation that contains nutrients essential for bacterial growth. As in this picture, you can see this is one medium, this is another, this is another. And these three together are called media. And they've got essential nutrients that are required for bacterial growth. Culture medium. A medium that has been successfully inoculated with bacteria. Inoculation of media. It means introduction of infected material to the medium for cultivation of organism present in that material. What is an agar? Agar is a type of gelatinous substance. It is commonly used as a solidifying agent in microbiological media. It has got following steps. Number one is weighing. Number two, mixing. Number three, heating. Number four, sterilization. And number five, pouring. Let's start with the first step that is weighing. The appropriate amount of agar is weighed out using a balance just like that. And then uh, this, this amount may vary depending on the specific recipe and the application. Which agar infusion are you using and which agar plate are you using? Second step is mixing. The agar is then added to a flask after the appropriate measurement and then the appropriate amount of water is added like that or uh, prior to adding the agar in the flask you have the appropriate amount of water and then you add that agar infusion into that and other desired nutrients like that tablet inside it or other additives are also added. This mixture is then stirred thoroughly to ensure the agar is evenly distributed. The third step is heating. The flask is then heated either on a hot plate or in a microwave until agar is completely dissolved. This may take several minutes and then the mixture should be stirred periodically to prevent scrotching. Step number four is sterilization. Once the agar is dissolved, the mixture is sterilized by autoclaving or filtration. Like that, this eliminates any bacteria or other contaminants that may be present. The last step is pouring. The sterilized agar is then poured into sterile petri dishes or tube putting in these plates as you can see which are then allowed to cool and solidify. Once the agar has solidified it is ready to be used for bacterial culture or other microbiological applications. Method of culture. Prior to everything else, we'll collect the sample, then we'll go for isolation of pathogen in a pure culture, that is agar-based medium. And then we'll streak the specimen over the surface of the agar plate, just like that. And then agar plates are incubated at specific atmospheric conditions. After obtaining pure, well-isolated colonies, further phenotypic characterization and antibiotic susceptibility testing can be performed. Types of culture media. These are the two major types of culture media. One is selective and the other one is differential. The selective media containing compounds that only allow certain bacteria to grow. For example, antibiotics, salts or dyes. On the other hand, differential media is differential because they contain other compounds that allow only one type of bacteria to be distinguished from another based on biochemical reaction, for example detecting hemolysis on blood agar plates or pigment formation. But in some places you'll also find the classification of culture media based on physical state and composition. According to physical state, culture media is classified into liquid and solid. Liquid media is fluid in nature and it is usually placed in test tubes. It is also called broths. For example, nutrient broth, triptych soy broth, phenol red carbohydrate broth. And solid media is prepared by adding solidifying agents like gelatin and agar to liquid medium. For example, nutrient agar, blood agar, mechaniki agar and chocolate agar. And according to composition, culture media is classified into simple media, which contains only basic substances such as nitrogen, carbon and minerals. For example, nutrient broth, nutrient agar, peptone water. And the second one is enriched media, 
enriched media is called enriched because it has got some enriched material like blood serum or aesthetic fluid aesthetic fluids actually the fluid present in abdomen um, during ascites um, mainly related to liver conditions and this fluid maybe serum aesthetic fluid or blood is added to the medium required for proper growth of some bacteria for example blood agar chocolate agar the third one is differential media We've discussed that. We've discussed selective media. Um, the example of differential media is McConkie medium and the selective media is Lowenstein Janssen's medium. The final one is media for biochemical reactions. It is used to detect different biochemical reactions produced by different organisms. For example, Simon citrate medium. Now we are going to have a look at commonly used bacteriologic agars. There are three columns in this table. First one is showing the name of the agar. Second one, it will be telling which bacteria is isolated on that agar. And the third one is telling the function or properties of the agar. I'll explain just two or three and we'll leave the rest to you guys. It's not difficult, don't worry. First agar is blood. Various bacteria are isolated on that agar and it is used to detect hemolysis. The second one is, it is an Italian word. It is Bordet Django Gango. I don't know how it is pronounced because I don't know Italian language. And I found that on internet that it is pronounced Django at some places and Gango at some places. And it is used for the isolation of Bordetella pertussis bacteria. And it is used to detect increased concentration of blood, which allows the growth. The third one is charcoal yeast extract. The bacteria isolated on that agar is Legionella pneumophila and it has got an amazing property that increased concentration of iron and cysteine allows growth. Let me have a look at another one. Okay, let's look at Lorenstein Jensen. The mycobacterium tuberculosis is isolated on that agar. It selects against gram-positive bacteria in respiratory tract flora and contains lipids required for growth. Let's start talking about the cultures. The first one is blood cultures. It is performed in the following cases. Sepsis, endocarditis, osteomyelitis, meningitis, and pneumonia. The bacteria most frequently isolated from blood cultures are two gram-positive cocci. The first one is Staphylococcus aureus. The second one is Streptococcus pneumoniae and three gram-negative rods. The first one is Escherichia coli, the second one is Klebsiella pneumonia, and the third one is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Certain pathogenic fungi, including yeast, candida species, and Cryptococcus neoformans and molds, can also be isolated from blood cultures. But we are not talking about fungus in this video, because this is dedicated to bacterial lab diagnosis. The method of blood cultures. For blood cultures, the site for venipuncture must be cleansed by an antiseptic to prevent contamination by members of the flora of skin, usually Staphylococcus epidermidis, and, and decrease the risk of infection-related complications. The blood obtained is aided to a rich growth medium in a bottle that contains an indicator for carbon dioxide production. Standard practice is to inoculate 10 ml of blood in each of two bottles per culture set, with one bottle incubated anaerobically and one bottle aerobically. Production of carbon dioxide within the bottle indicates that organism metabolism and growth have occurred. Once growth occurs, gram stain, subculture and antibiotic sensitivity tests are performed. In some hospitals, molecular methods are also used to identify the organism. Next ones are the throat culture. Throat cultures are performed in diphtheria, pharyngitis, conococcal pharyngitis and oral thrush caused due to candida and they are used to detect the presence of group A beta hemolytic streptococci, the streptococcus pyogens. Gram stain is typically not done on throat swab because it is impossible to distinguish between the appearance of normal flora streptococci and streptococcus pyogens. Method. When this specimen is obtained, the swab should not touch only the posterior pharynx but also both tonsils and tonsillar foci as well. Material on the swab is inoculated onto a blood agar plate and streaked to obtain single colonies. If colonies of beta hemolytic streptococci are found after 24 hours of incubation at 35 degrees Celsius, a basic tracing disk is used to determine whether the organism is likely to be a group A streptococcus. If growth is inhibited around the disc, it is group A streptococcus. If not, it is a non-group A beta hemolytic streptococcus. Sputum cultures. 
These are performed in the cases of pneumonia, pulmonary tuberculosis, and lung abscess. And they are commonly used to detect Streptococcus pneumoniae, Staphylococcus aureus, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Mycoplasma, and Legionella pneumoniae. Method, prior to doing anything else, we are going to collect what? Samples. The sample of sputum is collected. It is the sputum, not the saliva or nasopharyngeal secretions from the upper airway. Then it is streaked on blood agar plate and the presence of colonies on the plate is revealed. Culture of sputum on blood agar can reveal the presence of colonies with identification established using various serologic or biochemical tests or by Maldutov. It is abbreviated as matrix assisted laser desorption or ionization time of flight. Cultures of mycoplasma are infrequently done. Diagnosis is usually confirmed by a rise in antibody titer. If Legionella pneumonia is suspected, the organism can be cultured on charcoal yeast agar, which contains the high concentrations of iron and sulfur, which are required for growth. If tuberculosis is suspected, an acid found stain is done immediately and the sputum cultured on special media, which are incubated for at least six weeks. In diagnosing the aspiration pneumonia and lung abscesses, culturing for anaerobic bacteria is important. CSF cultures or cerebrospinal fluid cultures, these are performed in the following cases. If it is bacteria responsible for causing the disease, then diseases are meningitis, meningoencephalitis, transfer myelitis. CSF specimens from tissue-centric cases including encephalitis, brain abscess, and subdural empyema may show negative cultures. And for one fungus, and that is Cryptococcus neoformans. They are commonly used to detect these encapsulated organisms, Neisseria meningitidis, Streptococcus pneumoniae, and Haemophilus influenza. Method. Prior to doing anything else, sample is collected, then it is centrifuge, then what happens, it is taken through a staining procedure, either gram stain or acid fast stain, then the gram stain smear of the sediment of the centrifuge sample guides the immediate empirical therapy. The fluid should thus also be cultured on special media and the culture is held for a minimum of six weeks. And molecular methods are also used to identify these organisms. And for the fungus Cryptococcus neoformans, it is a cause of meningitis, particularly in human immunodeficiency virus infected patients. Um, the India ink test was performed in the past, but in present, most labs use the latex agglutination test. That is for the Cryptococcus neoformans, um, it's cryptococcal antigen, and that is done on CSF as a more specific and sensitive test. Stool cultures. These are performed in severe and persistent diarrhea, nosocomial diarrhea, and enterocolitis, and also the bloody diarrhea. It is commonly used to detect Shigella, Salmonella, Campylobacter, E. coli, especially its 0157 strains, and Clostridium difficile. The method is that feces are collected, Specimen is processed within two hours and plates used for different media are meconici agar using methylene blue agar, camphi CVA and sacro medium, meconci sorbitol medium and also molecular methods are used for these bacteria that are present in feces responsible for causing diseases. Urine cultures. Urine cultures are performed in following cases like pyelonephritis and cystitis. And these are commonly used to detect Escherichia coli which is the common cause of UTI than Enterobacter, protein and Enterococcus faecalis. Method is to obtain a specimen in a container or by using suprapubic aspiration and catheterization. Let me tell you something really cool here. Urine in the bladder of a healthy person is sterile, but it acquires organism of the normal flora as it passes through the distal portion of the urethra. To avoid these organisms, a midstream specimen avoided after washing the external orifice is used for urine culture. In special situations, suprapubic aspiration and catheterization may be required to obtain a specimen. How we are going to form the urine cultures? We'll go for a calibrated loop that holds 0.001 ml of urine and can be used to streak the culture. The second one is serial tenfold dilutions that can be made and sampled from dilution streaked. And the third one is a screening procedure. It involves an agar-covered paddle that is dipped into the urine after the paddle is incubated. The density of the colonies is compared with standard charts to obtain an estimates of concentrations of the bacteria in the urine. Something important about urine cultures. Culture to be done within first hour of collection. Urine to be stored in refrigerator for not more than 18 hours at 4 degrees Celsius. It is commonly accepted that a bacterial count of at least 
100,000 per ml must be found to conclude that significant bacteria is present in the urine and in asymptomatic patient. There is evidence that a bacterial count as low as 1,000 per ml is significant in symptomatic patients. Genital tract cultures. These are performed in the cases of abnormal discharge, STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, non-gonococcal urethritis, and cervicitis. And they are commonly used to detect Neisseria gonorrhea and Chlamydia trachomatis. The method is to obtain a specimen and it is obtained by swabbing. Um, by swabbing the urethral canal for men and cervix for women and anal canal for both men and women. And then it is streaked on the plate and is left for the growth and when the bacteria grows and here we go for our diagnosis. Plates being used in genital tract cultures. For Neisseria gonorrhea, the Thay Martin chocolate agar plate is used and for Chlamydia trachomatis, the cultures of human cells or the cultures of yolk sacs of embryonated eggs are used. Because the Treponema pallidum, the agent of syphilis, cannot be cultured, diagnosis is made primarily by serology and sometimes by microscopy. Wood and abscess cultures. These are performed in the following cases in the brain abscesses lung abscesses and abdominal abscesses and in case of wound infections traumatic open wound infections surgical wound infections and human bites and they are commonly used to detect the forming bacteria bacteroides fragilis gram positive cocci s aureus s pyogens clostridium perfringis staphylococci streptococci Propionibacterium acnes, viridin streptococci, streptococcus anginosus, provotella, and fusobacteria. The method is to collect a specimen in the collection tubes and then transport it to the culture and then streak that over the culture plate. When culture is negative, immunologic or molecular methods are used. Immunologic methods are which one? The serologic methods. How to diagnose a bacterial infection when the culture is negative? Detect the antibody in the patient's serum. Detection of immunoglobulin, IgM antibody, indicates a current infection. A single IgG antibody titer is difficult to interpret because it is unclear whether it represents a current infection or the previous infection. In certain diseases, a single titer of sufficient magnitude can be used as presumptive evidence of a current infection. Another thing that we can do when the culture is negative is to detect antigen in patient specimen. Use non-antibody to detect presence of antigens of the organisms. For example, fluorescein antibody to detect antigens in tissue. Latex agglutination to detect capsular polysaccharide antigens in spinal fluid. The third thing that we can do when culture is negative is to detect nucleic acids. Definitely in the patient's serum. And then use polymerase chain reaction, the PCR and DNA probes to detect the DNA or RNA of the organism. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You've learned something. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comment section. And also, if you want to connect with me on my social media, I've got my Instagram, I've got my Twitter, and I do upload blogs. I'll catch you soon. Till then, assalamu alaikum.